Rikard was a child to Radagon and Renala, and from a young age was ambitious and defiant, much like his siblings. His defiant attitude towards the Golden Order saw him as a great rebellious leader to many across the lands. His sister Rani was a mastermind behind the Knight of the Black Knives and stole the Rune of Death on a Night of Fog. Rani and Rikard share similarities and both wanted to overthrow the gods, but Rikard would end up choosing a different path to Rani, for better or worse. <laughs> Rikard would travel across the lands until he came upon Mount Gilmi, the volcanic castle, where he was destined to devour and annihilate knights and warriors alike who dared to challenge him. After some time, he was known as the Lord of the Volcano Manor. Or so he thought, in the darkness, in the depths of lava and volcanic ash, rose a serpent so powerful he would dismantle any foes that stood before him. It was that one serpent that would be the demise of Rikard. The alluring Rikard drew many companions along his travels, all admiring his brave ideals. They would in turn challenge the capital army in what some call to be the bloodiest battle of the Shattering. His ambitious nature proved costly as Mount Gilmere was turned into a treacherous wasteland. Some soldiers from the remains of the battle turned to cannibalism, as it was their only way of survival. The assault of Volcano Manor. The squalid, the sick, the blasphemous. A wretched, unending war with no glory. As Rikard spent more time within Mount Gilmere, he discovered ancient hexes native to the region. Rikard saw the potential powers of Mount Gilmere's magma. He would bring them into practical use as new forms of sorcery. This sorcery is held to represent the fury of the volcano, but the arrogance of attempting to harness it is solely that of men and serpents. As Rikard's infatuation with immortality grew stronger, the lunacy grew thicker, and in his mind he was left with no option but to succumb to the great power beneath the walls. He would feed himself to the blasphemous serpent known as Igle. A shrine for Igle can be found within the outskirts of Volcano Manor, where you can see the shed skin of Igle showcased proudly to honor him. This was a sacred place to Rikard and where his worship for the serpent begun. I understand the road of blasphemy is long and perilous, one cannot walk it unprepared to sin. Before Rikard was devoured by the blasphemous serpent, he would see a vision. A vision of a serpent devouring the world. That was the serpent's one true motive. And as Rikard grew one with the serpent, he would end up sharing that same goal. Together we will devour the very God. With every fighter, warrior, soldier, knight that Rikard would devour, he would become just that much more powerful. These spirits manifest from the rancor of heroes who met a violent end. The Lord granted them an audience, whereupon they were welcomed by the more of the great serpent, and within the serpent's bowels, they became the Lord's kin. It was now clear across the lands between Rikard was known as a scornful and foul creature. Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan. Praetor Rikard. Lunar Princess Rani. Willful traitors. All. His ultimate goal now was to devour the gods themselves and to grow to live eternally, feasting on the greatest champions the land had seen. When he rebelled against the Golden Order, he committed the sin of blasphemy. And since that day, he's been considered the Lord of Blasphemy. But some of Rikard's loyal companions did not recognize their once rebellious leader and decided to rebel themselves. 
Its crest of red feathers symbolizes Rikard's pedigree as Lord Radigan's son. It bears an emblem that none wear any longer, standing as it does for a lord that fell from loft ambition into glutinous depravity. As the lord lost his dignity, so did these knights lose their master. Searching for a weapon to kill their lord, they found the serpent hunter, crafted to kill the serpent and serpent alone. Thought to have been used to hunt an immortal serpent in the distant past, it manifests a long blade of light when facing such a creature. When their master's heroic aspirations degenerated into mere greed, his men searched for a weapon with which they might halt their lord. One of Rikard's men left the spear in the chambers, hoping, praying a great champion would one day slay the foul beast for good, sparing his once honorable leader from further degradation. When Rikard turned to heresy, taking by force became the rule. The gods themselves were no different after all. Long ago, before Rikard was devoured by the serpent, he would find an enchanting woman. Her name, Tanith. She was working as a dancer in a foreign land. He soon made her his consort. He was taken aback, not by her seductiveness, but her dignified beauty. She was the only human to remain by his side when he wasn't and was the serpent of blasphemy. In that moment, turning into that serpent, Tanith was truly charmed by him. She was obsessed by Rikard even after being consumed. Tanith leads Rikard's army and ambitions through the Volcano Manor, where she would offer worthy champions an audience with Rikard, which would inevitably lead them to their demise, only increasing his powers. Praetor Rikard also commanded a family of inquisitors. These inquisitors would use instruments of torture on nobles behind the curtains of Volcano Manor for no one to ever see or discover. The smell of burnt blood roams throughout those halls. Brutal weapons that provided severe pain and blood loss to their victims. Behind the closed doors was a barbaric and sickening nightmare. But at the front of Volcano Manor was a much different atmosphere. Members of Volcano Manor joined the cause through shared ambitions and saw themselves as outcasts, much like Rikard. But they knew the treachery that was needed to follow the path that Rikard and Tanith had set. I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. An honor to have you. Knight Banal poses as a graceful warrior when we first meet him, helping the tarnish with new techniques and attacks. But secretly, he's a recusant following Volcano Manor's regime, helping lure potential Tarnish to continue Rikar's cause, luring champions to serve them to their demigod. But some were smart and refused to accept the Volcano Manor offer. When Juno Hoslow received an invitation to the manor, he discreetly refused. I have already walked many a road drenched in blood, yet never would I consider myself a champion. The weapon that emerges from Rikard's mouth is known as the Blasphemous Blade Great Sword. Sacred Sword of Rikard, Lord of Blasphemy. Remains of countless heroes he was devoured writh upon the surface of this blade. Now they share the same blood, bound together as family. This is the same great sword that Rikard yielded for many years across his travels. Rikard, Lord of Blasphemy, was now a large an intimidatingly foul creature.
After defeating the serpent figure, the real Rikard would emerge. With small human arms, neck covered heavily by hardened scales, and his face grown from the underscale of the serpent's neck. He was now in his final form, more agile than ever before. With a destructive arsenal of attacks, including raining skulls, magma attacks, and explosive trails, all would help him vanquish his enemies. And after defeating Rikard, his final words lingered. In a chilling prospect, we are left to think, is Rikard truly dead? Hours later, Lady Tanith can be seen devouring and feasting on the remains of Rikard in a desperate attempt that he might survive inside of her. But she is just as delusional as her master. Oh, you... Allow me some time. Our Lord's carcass is vast and not easily consumed. Dear Rikard, please find purchase within me. I wish to be your serpent, your family. One day, let us devour the gods together. In the end, pray to Rikard, the Lord of Volcano Manor, was no more. Thanks again, guys, for checking out today's video. I really appreciate it. Many more Elden Ring lore videos to come. I'm just having an absolute blast searching through the game, looking at collectibles, looking at arm and notes, and, and putting the pieces together. It's absolutely phenomenal, the storytelling within the game. It's incredible. I'm going to give you guys more and more. Let me know who you want to see next in the comments, and make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and notifications on. And I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.